Over the weekend, South Korea observes Memorial Day, a day to remember and honour the heroes who fought for the country during the Korean War. Nearly 100,000 British troops from the Royal Navy, Army and Royal Air Force served on the Korean Peninsula as part of the United Nations Force after North Korea invaded the South in June 1950. Today we're joined by Peter Dobbs, who served in the war nearly 70 years ago. Hello Mr Dobbs, thank you so much for joining us this morning. You're very welcome. Well, my first question to you, how old were you when you served in Korea and what was your assignment in the Korean War? I was, I was 19 years old and my job was with communications, which meant radio sets and telephones. And, that's, and I used to service my regiment with this sort of information. Right, and well, back in the days, back in the 1950s, Korea wasn't very well known in the world, particularly in the United Kingdom. What was your first impression of the country when you landed? Korea wasn't known at all by hardly anybody. And when I first landed, the first thing that I, I, I enjoyed was the pleasure of meeting some of the Korean people and the neat and tidiness of the country itself. It was very similar in that day, it was very similar to Japan. Um, tidy, neat, lovely lawns. But outside of the towns, the whole thing was very wild and, and untouched. And it still is, I think. And it was a very bitter, very violent war, and there were just thousands and thousands of Chinese troops um, coming into the country as well. H how was that? How was, you know, life that in was, the front lines? That was very bad, and I didn't, fortunately, I didn't get involved in that side of it, but I know people that were, and I was talking to your friend about the guy that won the Victoria Cross by holding a huge line of Chinese back for, I think it was four hours. And luckily, they had left him a lot of fast firing guns in this trench. And with the, he, he shot a lot of Chinese people. And he won the Victoria Cross. He's still, he's still in London now. He's one of the red, uh, what do they call him, Sam? is one of the, um, the, the, they live in this old place for the soldiers. Well, more than a thousand British soldiers lost their lives in South Korea. Those must yeah. have been really very, very dark days. How did you cope with yeah. the difficult times? How does one cope with any of these difficulties? They're presented to you, they're put in front of you, and you shrug your shoulders and say, yeah, okay. And that's how you present it. It's how you deal with it. Um, but we didn't. We didn't have a bad time in Korea. Everybody would like to think we did, but we didn't. We had a good time in Korea. Do you have any particularly uh, fond memories that you have of Korea? Yeah, going out for meals with the with the, the local Korean civilians. That was great fun, and the, their their food was totally different to Western food, but it was very pleasant. Very, a lot of fish, a lot of fish. A lot of fish. Well, lot um, of fish. how long were you in Korea, Rand? Um, how do you think that really changed you, I suppose? About six, about six months. Um, and uh, it, was, it was all very good because the army looked after everything you needed everything, clothes, food, where you slept, and everything like that. And the Koreans, obviously, they were locals. They had their own houses. So it was rather pleasant to get invited to these people to go and see how they lived, which was totally different to us, totally different, but well, very pleasant. Do you recall the day that your service ended and you had to go back to the United Kingdom? Yes, I do. Um, and we were going back the next day, as it were. So we ought to have all of our kit packed and ready to go. And then the whole of our regiment returned as one. We sailed on the, I think it was the Asturias, the boat, and we all went on the Asturias and we set sail and that was it, gone, finished. And that was once the war was over. 
Yes. Yeah. And how did that make you feel, having knowing that you protected the peace and you protected the freedom of South Korea? Well, I was quite pleased because it was the first, the first United Nations medal that was presented to anybody. So basically, there were people from Canada and America and Germany and France. This this United Nations thing had come from all over the world. So there was an awful lot of them, a lot of people there. And I believe you got a medal yourself. I mean, I think we have a picture of that, don't we? I mean, we would love to see that. I mean, how did it feel getting that medal? Uh, very, very special. Um, the, the first one that we got from the United Nations, which isn't here, um, has a big, a big a lot of writing on it, which tells you how it came from the United Nations and uh, what it was all about. And that medal was very important. Um, this, this second medal that I've got, um, to be honest with you, I think that was sent deliberately by your, by your uh, office in Seoul. Oh, from South Korea. Could we take a, a closer look at that, actually? We'd love yeah. to, if you could hang it up for I'm us. I'm We'd holding love to it see up that. now. Can, oh, can you see it? Um, a little bit higher. Oh, there we go. Right. Oh, Got it. Very shiny, and we see the uh, Korean emblem there, the Taegukki. Right. And you, on the back of it? Oh, there. there's also the back of it as well. Yeah. Um, I think you're going to have to pull it away slightly from okay. the screen. Oh, there we go. What but, does it say? Well, when um, you return to the... What? Ambassador for Police. Ambassador for Sorry. Police. No, no. Ambassador for Peace. Ambassador for Peace. Right. Oh, there we go. That was issued by the South Korean government. And, of course, yeah. to this day, we're ever so grateful. And, well, when you went back to the United Kingdom, um, what did you go on to do as a career? I went to work for a company called Barrett's, with shoe manufacturers in Northampton. Northampton was a big shoe manufacturing area in, in, North, in town. And I went to work for Barrett's, um, W. Barrett and Company. And um, then, I, sorry. And how do you think uh, the Korean War really changed you as a person? I mean, after having come back from, you know, just, uh, well, the Korean War was three years long, you spent six months there, but it must have been quite a life changing experience. It changed. It changed everything because your mind thinks a completely different. You start to see problems that other people have got where you yourself hadn't got any problems at all. You know, I was quite wealthy, I had a lovely house, everything like that was perfect. But when I got to Korea and you started to see what the other side wanted to do, and the Chinese, wasn't very clever. So well, it left you it left you with a funny situation in your head. Well, when you look at South Korea now, how do you feel? I feel like we've made a lot of um, improvements, a lot of advancement over the decades. And what does it make you feel looking at South Korea today? Well, don't, don't forget this. When I first got there, Seoul didn't have one brick standing on another. It was flattened. Yeah. Did you understand that? Not a single brick. <laughs> no, no, no bricks standing on with it. Everything was demolished. Everything was rubble. But it didn't take all that long to rebuild it, did it? We've qu come quite a long way from the ruins of war. And have you been, um, have you visited Korea since then? Have you been keeping up with what's going on or seen any recent photos? Uh, I, 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 I've kept up with a little bit that's going on, but I, I know I've not. I've not been back to Korea. It's a long way away. <laughs> well, I believe the South Korean government. We've uh, the South Korean government has been sending some face masks to war heroes like yourself recently. Um, have you happened to receive them yet? Yeah, they are beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Oh, they've arrived. Great. Yeah. And and the and the face masks too. We have those face masks. Yeah. Oh. Uh, 
Oh, I see. And on the screen, we can see the uh, mask kits that were sent to you, I believe. And yeah. um, also a letter as well showing our appreciation. Well, I've got that, yes. Well, that was very pleasant to, to receive that. It, it's nice to think, I know that you've got an anniversary coming along, and it's nice to think that some of us were remembered. All of you are very much remembered to this day and you will always be remembered here in Korea. And as you said, we are having a Memorial Day on Saturday. Um, that's June 6th every year. And we've got another anniversary coming up on June 25th, actually, uh, when the Korean War actually broke out in 1950. And of course, that's when North Korea invaded the South. And well, um, it must have really been very tough times, just very threat. Uh, you must have felt very pressured as well while you were here. I mean, how did you sort of recover from that kind of stress once you were back don't, in don't, the yeah, Kingdom? When you're in the British Army, yeah, you are in one of the best armies in the world. So the pressure that they could put on us wasn't as great as you perhaps think it was. The, we, we, we handled the pressure completely, knowing if the entire Chinese force invaded, we would still defeat them. Do you understand what I'm saying? Right, the, the strength of the British Army, especially in the 20th century. It's so, so incredibly strong. And uh, the, the Chinese would not have taken over. No. Of course, Britain has been known for its uh, military strength over the centuries, really. But, um, Absolutely. Well, some people, though, they call Korean, the Korean War the Forgotten War. But, which is quite unfortunate, really, considering all the lives lost and just the sheer tragedy that it was. What are some things that you believe the world should never forget about it? United Nations should be made 10 times stronger than it is. 10 times stronger. So if an occasion came up similar to the Korean War, there would be no hesitation. I mean, if they went in with all their tanks and guns and all the other kit that the you know, the British Army have got, they would have they would have they would have decimated the Chinese as they would anybody else. Unfortunately, it's still going on that that countries have been taken over and invaded in the last two three years. Should never have happened if the United Nations had been there to protect them. So we don't think it's a very good idea at all. Of course, as you said, there are conflicts um, con continuing to take place across the world. And it's really one thing to risk your life for your own country, but it's quite something else to risk it for another country, as you did. And it's been ah. a true honour speaking with you. And we are eternally it grateful for your service. It didn't matter that, that that was the situation. When you were in the army, in the British army, you do what you're told, no matter what. But it takes, That's important. It takes bravery and courage to see that through. And we are very and eternally you. grateful for your sacrifice, for your fight for Korea to gain the freedom of its people. And people like you made it possible for the 51 million people in South Korea today to enjoy the democracy and the privilege of, that we have of being free. And before we go, we finally, we also remember the 1,078 British troops who were killed in the Korean War and the 82 that never returned from enemy hands. Your sac you and your sac their sacrifices will never be forgotten. Please do remember that. You are always seen as heroes here in South Korea. Thank you You're so welcome. much for joining us today, Mr. Peter Dobbs. You're very welcome. This is where we wrap up the show today. We're going to be back at the same time on Monday in Korea. Have a lovely weekend wherever you are. Goodbye.